Previously, we have implemented the behavior so that when we click on the hour labels, our page is scrolled to a particular hour. But this scrolling happens instantly, so what we're gonna do in this lesson is to make this scrolling smooth. First of all, let's open up component where this hour label is located. It is timeline item component. Let's find uh, this timeline hour component. This is that component by clicking on which the page gets scrolled to a particular hour element. And as we can see here we have a click event listener registered on this component. And when the click event occurs, we're gonna fire custom event with the name scroll to hour to pairing component. And as a payload we're sending our value which we're fetching from timeline item object. And of course in the parent component we handle this custom event by using function scroll to hour. So in here to make the scrolling behavior smooth, we're gonna create configuration object with one option called behavior. And the value that we need to make the scrolling behavior smooth is called exactly that, smooth. And now all we have to do to make our scrolling behavior smooth is to pass this options object within scroll into view method, like so. We are doing it in both places. And now every time when we're gonna click on our labels, we can see that our page scrolls to a particular hour smoothly. But this hour change has also caused a negative effect, because when we try to fully refresh the page, we will see that the smooth scrolling behavior applies in this case as well. But what we need instead is that on initial page load, page gets scrolled to current timeline item instantly. So to do this, we have to make this function scroll to hour except one more parameter, which is gonna be responsible for scrolling behavior. Let's call this parameter is smooth with the default value of true. And then by using this parameter, we're going to decide which scrolling behavior to use by using ternary expression. So let's write down here this expression and check variable is smooth. If it is true, we're gonna use smooth scrolling behavior. Otherwise, we're gonna fall back to instant. And now when this function gets called after we click on our label, because it is currently registered as an event listener for scroll to our event that comes from timeline item component. The second parameter is smooth will be true by default, and in this case it's fine. Because page in this case should scroll smoothly when we click on our labels. But on initial page load execution flow goes differently. And when we load the page, this closure which we're passing to watch post effect function gets run, and the page is scrolled to a current timeline item by using this function call scroll to hour. And since on initial page load we don't want smooth scrolling behavior, so let's pass false as a second parameter to this function like this. And then this value gets passed into is smooth parameter, which will eventually turn this whole ternary expression and produce value instant, which will of course make scrolling behavior on the initial page load instant. And let's check it out. Firstly, I'm gonna try to click on our labels. Let's make sure that in this case scrolling happens smoothly. Everything works as expected. And now if we try to fully refresh the page, we will see that page gets scrolled to the current timeline item instantly. That's what we wanted. And even after navigating to a timeline page from another page, the page still scrolls instantly to current timeline item. And this is desired behavior, so let's now go back to the editor and do a little refactoring. Let's just simplify this function call scroll to hour. As a first parameter, we're going to pass null in this case. And then let's move the logic which determines current hour within scroll to hour function and use optional assignment operator like so. That means if our parameter wasn't passed, we're gonna assign value of current hour to this hour parameter. Otherwise, this assignment will be ignored and the hour parameter will contain past value from outside into this function. So let's also make this parameter hour optional by assigning null value in here. And let's make sure that in the browser everything still works as expected. Let's try to navigate to a timeline page from another page and make sure that the page gets scrolled to a current timeline item instantly. Everything's working as expected. So let's go on and implement such behavior so that when clicking on logo, we're also going to be scrolled to a current timeline item. Firstly, let's see what is currently going on when we click on the logo. Let's go inside of the header component where our logo component is located. And here we see that we have a click event listener, which fires another custom event with the name navigate to a parent component. 
and as a payload with this event we're sending the name of the page we'd like to navigate to. And of course within the root component app.view we have a listener which listens for navigate event and calls go to function as we can see in here. And all this go to function does is it basically modifies value of the reactive variable current page. So now we're gonna have to handle one more case in here and write an if statement. Let's check if the value of the current page equals to timeline and at the same time parameter page also equals to the page timeline. That means that we are already at the timeline page and we clicked on the logo being on the timeline page. In this case we're gonna have to somehow scroll the page to the current timeline item. But the thing is that that function which allows us to scroll to the current timeline page is located within the timeline component right here. It is that function scroll to our. So we need to somehow gain access to this function to be able to call it from within app component. And let's do just that. Let's go ahead and add a ref to the timeline component within app component. Let's call this ref simply timeline. And this way we can get a reference to the instance of the timeline component in app component. Now we have to also declare the ref with the same name timeline within the app component. Let's do just that. Let's create new constant with the name timeline and use ref function as initializer. And before doing anything else, let's scroll down to our go to function and within this if conditional, let's just print out value of our timeline ref like this just to see what we're gonna get within this ref. And now in the browser, once I'm going to click on the logo in a console, we should get an output. And this output is the result of printing that timeline ref. So this ref is basically a pointer to the instance of the timeline component. And we know that this, the timeline component, contains the function which we need to call from the app component. It is scroll to our function. But by default this function is private, so we need to somehow expose this function, so we'll be able to call it from within app component. And to expose some variables or functions to parent component, there is a macro called define expose. Let's use this macro right below the define emits macro in here. And as a parameter we should specify which functions and variables we are exposing to the outside. So in this case we need to expose only one function with the name scroll to our. So as an object, let's use the object key that corresponds to the function name scroll to our. So now that we have provided access to this private function scroll to our, we can easily use reference timeline and call that scroll to our function from the parent component like this. And by the way, while calling this function scroll to our in here, we don't need to pass any extra parameters because those values that are used as default values for these parameters are exactly that we need in this case. So we're not passing any particular hour because we'd like to scroll the page to the current hour by clicking on the logo. And by passing null within this function, current hour will be automatically determined and assigned to our parameter. And as for the second parameter, scrolling behavior when clicking on the logo should be smooth. So the second parameter's default value is also going to work for us. So let's just see if this behavior works. I'm going to click on the logo. And this time we should get smooth scrolling behavior to the current timeline item. That's exactly what we're seeing. So the page smoothly scrolls to the current timeline item, which in my case is 1pm. And the final improvement we're going to do is we're going to implement automatic scrolling behavior to the very top of the page. So for example, if we're leaving some page and the scroll bar is at the very end of this page, and then if we're coming back to this page, we're supposed to get scroll bar at the very top. But as we can see currently, it remains at the very bottom. So it's pretty easy to do. Let's go back to the app component and add one more conditional in here. We're going to check here if the page name we're currently trying to navigate to does not equal to timeline. Pretty much that means if the page name will be activity or progress. In this case we're always going to scroll the page to the very top. And we're doing this by using scroll into view method on the body object like this. So let's see, currently I'm being on the activities page and the scroll bar is at the very bottom. 
And once I'm gonna try to go to another page and then come back to activities page, this time I see that scroll bar appears at the very top of the page, which means our scrolling behavior works. So what we have right now regarding scrolling is that when clicking on the logo, we're automatically scrolling the page to the current timeline item, and the scrolling behavior in this case is smooth. And also when we're clicking on a particular hour labels, page scrolls to that hour also smoothly, as well as on initial page load, page gets scrolled to the current timeline item, but in this case, scrolling behavior is instant. Let's continue the development of our project in the next lesson.